in its mystery, it's already a story. You can't escape from storytelling because even if you are not uh, conscious of it, aware of it, uh, people will imagine things. Because as human beings, we are fictional <laughs> animals. We need fiction. We need a, a place to, to, to put our emotions, to put a, a sense of purpose, a meaning to understand things, because otherwise there will be too much questions. Uh, so we need information, practical information, but we also need a story. Once upon a time, there were millions of businesses struggling. Every day they wasted time, effort and money on repetitive tasks that added no value one day. The Better Automation Podcast by Processio came to help them find a way. Because of this, these businesses save time, reduce costs, innovate and make better decisions. Because of that, these businesses grow scale and use human creativity to change this world. Hello, my name is Aziz and I'm your host at Better Automation Podcast by Processio where I interview the world's top experts and share their very best ideas on how to improve automation in your business processes and life. My guest today is Lucie Barat and Dagobert Renouf. Lucie has been designing brands since 2005. She specializes in visual storytelling, the art of conveying emotion through symbols. She refined her design process by helping startups for more than 15 years and teaching in universities for 10. Lucie is the author of Looking for Janice and Le Chien Noir and the radio host of Rebelle Rebelle. Dagobert Renouf left a high-paid software job to bootstrap Logology with his wife and his father-in-law doesn't approve. Logology helps you get a designer quality logo for your startup in five minutes. Lucie and Dagobert, how are you today? I'm very good. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having us, Aziz. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, very happy to be here and to do this podcast, uh, you know, with like my wife. Like it's going to be fun, I think, to do an interview, like, you know, together. I agree. I'm really happy to have you here. And I'll begin by asking Lucy a question that I'm curious about. How do symbols create emotions and how do symbols lead to creating a brand? I know it's super big, we're beginning in this way, but I'm curious about it. Oh, but it's a very good question. So I'm happy to begin with this question. Uh, I, um, I'll try to be the most, the clearer I can be on this because it's a large subject. Well, symbols... Um, are, I would begin by saying that symbols are, are all around us and symbols are not only visual. Like for example, uh, if someone is, uh, uh, if, you, if you're uh, seeing someone in the street and this person is raising uh, her, her hand or it's his hand to say hello, it's a, it's a sign that people say, oh, this person is saying hello and... Um, it will mean something to you. It is meaningful. It is a, a message. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, um, I'm just looking for my words. So what I wanted to say is that symbols are all around us and they are very useful to express emotion. For example, I would take another example. Um, let's talk about color. Colors are meaningful. A red or a blue tone won't convey the same emotions. Uh, if you're looking at a picture or a landscape full of red, maybe it will warm you or you will be, uh, you will feel stress, something like that. So symbols are just um, um, all the little signs and signals that convey message, emotion beyond their 
uh, uh, appearance. Red is just a color, but red is also a symbol. It, it conveys a connotation and it's an emotion. Is it, okay, is it clear for this part? Thank you. I understood, so if I understood you correctly, the symbols are a stimulus that trigger an emotion within us and they don't have to be visual. They can be auditory or kinesthetic or any kind. And therefore, I will ask you about a brand. Is a brand something that uses existing symbols within the human psyche to trigger emotion? Or can we take something that it wasn't a symbol before and we make it a symbol that triggers emotions for our prospects and audience. One thing that I didn't say about symbol and that is very important to understand brand is that symbol are meaningful for a community, for a group of people. You can't uh, just uh, take something and say it will be the symbol of. It can begin to be a symbol, but only if it make it is, if it's make of symbols. For example, uh, um, in different culture, you won't have the same meaning. Um, like I was speaking of the red color. Um, red in some culture will mean danger, and in other culture, like I, I, I I'm thinking of China, for example, where it's a meaning of luck and success. So. When you are using uh, these tools, these stimulus, as you said, it's exactly this, this uh, you always have to be aware of who are you talking to? Who are you going to uh, um, talk to? When you create a brand, a brand is uh, a, a symbol made to gather people, to gather people around and feel like it's like an identification it's uh, really uh, symbols are very ancient and we can trace their their history uh, from thousands and thousands years ago and i will just take an example of middle age you know in middle age well in europe um, the knights will carry uh, uh, coats of arms with different uh, image and colors uh, like animals and plants and stuff and all this is like the brand because it was a way to say hi this is my name and these are my values and this is what I represent and if you are okay with this come and join me so a brand is really a tool to say to your customers and your audience hi this is me, <laughs> the brand, the business, the product. This is me. Come and join me. So you need to find symbols that will uh, speak to your audience. You can't just take something from, I don't know, the ground or from behind and say, oh, hi, this is something new. It will never be completely new. It will be something uh, invented, imagined and built for uh, a group of people. Thank you. So if I understood you correctly, there could be, like Carl Jung would say, some symbols and archetypes that exist within the subconscious of all human beings that mean the same kind of in many ways. And there are symbols that are specific to a group of people that have a very different meaning come from group to group. And you can take something if you're building an audience and create about it like a mythology or give it a meaning that it wasn't there and therefore it becomes a symbol for your people. Is this correct? Yes, completely correct. And what is important is to, to always have in mind the context in which you are speaking and so who you are speaking to. But just like you said, just like Carl Jung said about archetypes, all human beings on earth, we are living uh, the same emotions and experience. Like I would go again with colors, for example, the, the, the color, the yellow color is often associated everywhere in the world 
with light because we all have the experience of sun. And this is something that brings emotions to us uh, human, human beings. So if we, as designer, as brand designer, combine different uh, symbols, we can create a new one, an emblem, a logo, for example, but not only a logo. Uh, a, a brand identity is, is, is larger and bigger than a, and than a logo to make new message, new storytelling, a new mythology, exactly. And this story, this mythology, will be the story that people want to share with you. People want to gather around the fire, you know, to, 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 to imagine new things and to live the emotion with your brand. It's all the brand experience. It's a large, um, it's a large theme. Thank you. Lucy, and to Dagobert, how do you use this understanding when building your personal brand online? So I think for a personal brand, it's a bit, I would say it's simpler because um, when it's you, it's all about being authentic, I think. Like if you want it to be, you know, if you want your personal brand to be to resonate with people it has to be like people have to feel that it's authentic you know like so I feel like when you build your personal brand it's more like being yourself and in doing so you will probably have like common themes that emerge that are like for example for me who is building my personal brand it's going to be about being fun about being a bit you know witty um and also supportive, you know, and that's gonna be more like the, the thing that I spontaneously, uh, that's, my, that's my normal posture, like that's the way I am, you know. And so then personal branding just becomes a way of clarifying that and making that more obvious and putting this, you know, making it visible, you know, by putting emphasis on it. Uh, whether it's visually or like, you know, by the things you talk about and what you repeat, you know, regularly. Um, but yeah, it's mostly about being authentic and then trying to, to stay consistent with that so people can... Because yeah, there's also this thing about repeating and being consistent. That's a big part of it. Like, what people remember about you? Like, what's the thing that you're always doing that people can see you do? And at, at the end of the day, that's what they associate with you. Just like if they see your logo all the time, eventually they know, you know, what the logo is about. So, yeah. Now, with my personal branding, I didn't go very far with like logos or you know anything, because I think the best personal branding is just yourself, like your picture. But, but yeah, there's definitely a way to put emphasis on the values and qualities you, you're about. Thank you. And to play the devil's advocate a little bit, Dagobert, some people will say we have lived for millions of years without needing a personal brand. And as you said, be yourself, be authentic. So why should they care about having a personal brand? Is this a, something that was invented just online or by some people to sell new things to founders and to other people? Or why does it become important today while a hundred years ago, maybe it was only for celebrities and movie stars and fictional characters? Well, I think it's just because now you have way more uh, small celebrities, you know, with social media, you have tons of influencers and, cre and not just influencers, like people who create, uh, you know, cre in independent creators who want to make a living with their creations or indie startup founders like us. Uh, it's like basically everything, like if you start running a small business, you, I mean, branding is super important. So it's just that I think the reason why we have personal branding now is because you have lots of solo indie businesses, you know, small creators, small, you know, business owners that are online. And so you need kind of like a personal brand to take yourself further and reach and like, you know, have a more, uh, reach more people. Now, yeah, and I think um, it's about, and also maybe because of the competition, I think it's also just like 
for example, people who, even people who are not creators or entrepreneurs, but just looking for a job, but they want to stand out in the market, creating like a brand of being seen as an ex expert in a topic or something like that, this can give them an edge. So it's kind of like more like uh, more and more competition, uh, you know, for like good jobs or, you know, making your company stand out or making your creations visible with so many people, you know, fighting for attention with social media. And so personal branding is a way to go from just some random guy on the internet to, okay, this person has like a clear goal, clear purpose. I can identify things that I resonate with or not. And it's more effective in, you know, uh, getting followers, getting people to care about what you say and all that. Thank you so much. And I have more questions, Dagobert, but for Lucy, I remember you mentioned storytelling and sitting around on a camp of fire and how that relates to brand and symbols. But how does narrative play a role within that? Because it wasn't clear to me. Can you speak about narrative? What is it? How does it interact with symbols and with branding? Well, symbols are always the, um, the spark of a narrative it begins with a symbol just a symbol conveys emotion it can convey a meaning it can convey mystery and it in its mystery it's already a story you can't escape from storytelling because even if you are not uh, conscious of it aware of it uh, uh, people will imagine things because as human beings, we are fictional <laughs> animals. We need fiction. We need a, a place to, to, to put our emotions, to put a, a sense of purpose, a meaning to understand things, because otherwise there will be too much questions. Uh, so we need information, practical information, but we also need a story to understand. So... When you build a, a, a brand, uh, you will you can begin with the values you want to convey. It's I would say the easier path um, and the most logical. But you can begin with a story, and usually the two dimension will meet during the process of designing a brand. Um, you have the value, but the value it will begin to tell a story. Uh, for example, if you are an entrepreneur and the value you carry is about um, authenticity, uh, uh, success, or uh, you like challenges, and you also like support, you are very supportive, you like to be with mates, you like to learn. For example, this are a, 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 a compilation of um, values, but I can tell a story from that. You are telling the story of a young entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneur who is meeting other uh, in a co-working and so on, and they build together a new product. Just I'm just saying things like imagining things, but you see how can we go on a on a narrative just from hint, hints of values, and all the narratives you can imagine is a way to. Be identified as a brand, be identified as a person, a service, and so on. But also to create links and imagine the future of your business. Because when you know what you are, uh, what you represent, what your brand is, uh, and what is the message that you can get, that you carry uh, with you, you are able to imagine the future of your business, and you are able to imagine. How uh, can you interact with your audience so and so? And how, and how do you put that into the symbol? Well, the symbols are like uh, evidence in a, in a police investigation. <laughs> like imagine the private detective. You will uh, take the different pieces and may maybe you will, you, will, you will use pieces by pieces to tell the story. But in each time you are... Uh, uh, in action of um, doing something with the brand, expressing something, 
or creating or designing something with your business and in a go-to-market uh, uh, purpose, you will use symbols. Because as I said before, symbols are everywhere. Symbols are shapes, symbols are colors, symbols are font, symbols are sounds, symbols are gestures. So you will intentionally uh, be careful to each uh, pieces of this, each symbol you are using. And it's like writing a story. You will begin with one piece, one action, and after uh, a while you will have a complete uh, narrative. But you will have also, like you said before about consistency, you will have to say it again, again and again and again in order to be, to be heard. Am I, am I clear or do you need more uh, <laughs> precise, precise information? It's very clear. And I want to take this deeper and get your opinion on it. Some experts will say that nowadays brands are much bigger than just values and symbols and colors, but people have lost their connection with religion. So they're looking for mini religions through the brand. And that's why, as you see, religion is full of symbols, rituals, deeper meaning, all. And therefore, your brand should have a deep history. It should have symbols. It should have saints and devils. And it should have a heaven and a hell and a future. Do you agree with this? What's your perspective on it? It's um, many people say that the brand should fill the void or the narrative void that was left by too many people becoming secular while before this was filled with their religion. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I think it is already the case. And whatever we want it or not, it is already the case. We can also say that in another way. We could also say that maybe religions uh, had been very um, efficient in brand design, even without knowing it. Because brand design comes with a narrative, as I said, with symbols and um, with rituals and tradition and the fact that you go again and again repeating things. So it's the experience of the brand. Like you can experience... Uh, uh, the, the rituals of a re religion, you can experience religion and have emotions when you think of religion, I would say, aside from faith, from pure faith, but uh, just uh, the, the um, rituals, just like you have with the brand, just like you have with, I would say, uh, even a yogurt that you love uh, since you are a child and you will have memories sharing these memories with maybe your family and the taste and the color of the of the packaging and the design of the logo and the advertising that you that you used to love and we tend to be um, attached to it because it's like when we as we grow with this culture and if you and if you if we don't find a, a meaning in life, we get we tend to be attached to these experiences, like true and 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 meaningful experiences, like when you are growing old, and you can become nostalgic of your childhood, and you will I don't know maybe think of brands that you used to love when you were a child, and suddenly these brands will will we'll be like friends to you. So I don't know if it's good or bad, but I'm pretty sure that brands are already substitutes to something else. And maybe it's religion for people who don't find their way. Uh, and the way will be being around brands that you love, like you have friends. Um, but yeah, it's, brands are everywhere. Everywhere we need a cho we, uh, everywhere we need a choice, and you know, in, I just want to add this uh, before you go on, is that today, uh, nowadays, we are in a culture where we have so many informations going on all the time on the internet and and all the modern uh, society, I would say, television and so many distractions, so many stories so many books, so many movies, like 
I was born in the 80s and I, I didn't have the opportunity to see so many uh, uh, TV shows and, and so on. So we have so many products. So it's so much. It is too much for for we single human being when you go to the supermarket and you have to make a choice you want to do it quick and brands are there to help us make choice because you will choose something that you like something that you love something you feel close to and it's always the same so brands um, are doing their best today to stand out from the crowd because of this because of the too much I don't know where to go <laughs> situation. Thank you and Dagobert do you believe a lot of founders understand the depth of branding because a lot of them if you ask them what is your brand they show you a logo or say oh yes uh, I just have a logo and some colors and whatever it is so two things how does logology help people who are building a brand do you raise awareness that a brand is more than a logo and i know you offer that service and it's smart marketing to begin with what people want and then give them more or what's your perspective or the goal or the contribution that logology does to branding and that service that is needed like Lucy spoke about, whether it is for easier choice, for added meaning, or for being something that is important in this world rather than a transactional uh, thing. Yeah, it's funny you talk about founders maybe not understanding the value of branding, because even me, I feel like I'm understanding more, like that more every day that it's more important than I thought, because. I myself tend to believe that what matters is the product, what matters is, you know, the service. Uh, but like, it's so important, like, the way people remember you, the way they will talk about you, all of that is influenced by your branding. And, of course, branding is not just the logo. Like, there's this saying, I don't know who it's from, but I read it and it really stuck with me. It's like, branding is what people remember about you. And I don't know a better definition. I guess like, it's just like, I mean, it's not just visual branding, it's like branding in general, but like, branding is like, yeah, what do you remember about this company? And, and this will mostly come down not to just the logo, but it's gonna come down to the experience you have. So for example, amazing customer support is good branding. Like when you remember like you had a problem and they helped you quickly, you remember that positive things about it. And that's like positive thing for their brand. It's like a beautiful thing for their brand. And that's going to help with word of mouth and all of that. So now the way we help with Logology is, I mean, our ambition with Logology was never to do just the logo. You know, it was always to help people as you, as you, you know, suspected, uh, it was always to help people figure out, uh, again, from who they are and what their company is, not like act like somebody else by like, oh, I want to look like this. That's not what we do. It's more like, who are you? Like, what are your values? And what are your company values? And who's your market? And who's your audience? And from that, we tell them, oh, okay. So the best way to connect emotionally with these people is gonna be with this kind of logos. So, you know, that's how logology works. Like you take the quiz about your values and then we tell you, these are the colors, these are the fonts, and these are the logos that, you know, express that. You know, and then you can buy a logo, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you wanna get started. Because the goal is also to help founders who are just getting started. Because like, branding is important at like any stage, but like when you're beginning and you don't have money, you shouldn't spend thousands of dollars on a brand designer because it's like it's just too big of a risk and it's not use it's not it's not useful enough at this stage it's more like you need something to look good and to be consistent with your message so people can like want to try your product but you should still also focus on building your product and not spend all your money on branding so that's like the whole idea and then what we're doing now because like Logology has such a strong foundation of like understanding the values of the company, 
then we can like expand to everything. And now we're like expanding to providing, I mean, that's in the works, should be launched tentatively in September. Uh, and the goal is like to give people not just the logo, but like an entire guide about their brand. So like, what's, what's the voice of your brand? How do you talk about it? What are like, and beyond just the main font and, and colors, like what are the kind of colors you can use in all your marketing materials? How to use different fonts? How to design your website? Like how do you make your brand like shine everywhere? And how do you talk about your product so that it's, you know, it, it really is consistent every step of the way. Because if you want people to remember you for something, there's nothing better than consistency. Like if they see the same if they get the same kind of feeling interacting with you, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on the website, whether when is they have you on the phone, like if they get the same kind of feeling that it's reinforcing and then eventually this is your brand, the, the thing they remember. So that's why it's important to have the logo is basically where everything converges, like the colors, the shapes, the emotion. It's kind of like the core of like, like the small like diamond uh, at the center. But like then it's how everything expresses around that, you know, as a kind of like uh, as an expression of this core thing. And, you know, so that's what we're going to be focusing on more, you know, later this year. Thank you. That's really good. You're always evolving. And I also know you focus a lot on not adding more features that people don't want. So it's about knowing also what people will buy because the fact that you value something doesn't mean other people will. And that's what we all entrepreneurs have to struggle with. To Lucy, I have this question. Some people are very hesitant to choose values for their brand for two reasons. One of them, they don't really spend enough time reflecting to understand what their values are. They don't know themselves as, as you know, philosophically, know yourself is the first thing or the purpose of life, or at least the first purpose before you find your life purpose. And secondly, they notice that every five or seven years, they change as a human being, their values change. And so they worry, they think, well, what if I choose my brand today and these values that now I like, but later on I feel stuck because I will not believe in those values in the same way anymore. I will have new values. What's your perspective on this? That a lot of people are just living and not uh, spending enough time thinking about what is meaningful to them in order to know the values that will matter to their brand, as well as worrying that maybe they will change their opinion another day and they don't want to be stuck. Well, I would say to them that there is um, two uh, important things here. The first important thing is that whenever you want it or not, you will have to take time for it because as we say as we said before from the moment you want to go to market with your product or your service you can't escape brand uh, even if you think there is no brand it's already branding it could be a bad branding but it's branding so it's better if you can have a an insight on the situation at least control a little bit the image of your business and the second thing, and maybe it can relieve some <laughs> of founders uh, who are anxious about this, is that the brand is not really about you. It's not you. Well, you can have a, a personal brand. That's something. But brand is something different. Brand is not you. Like your business is not you, your product is not you, your service is not you. Even if you love it like with your whole heart and, and, and you feel like it's you, it's not you. And the brand is the image of uh, the, the business. So it's, you can uh, take a little step back, you know, and look at it and, 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 and design your brand like you are designing your product or your service. Um, so it's, it's less complicated, I think, this way, because you can uh, spend time 
just uh, thinking about what are your core values now and what are the core values you share with your audience and maybe in the future you'll change and maybe in the future your audience will change you can't you can't know about this but it's not that important because brand can evolve with you you can make it change a little bit and it's um it's 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 yeah it's frequent that brands are changing through times uh, for example i remember the time where airbnb change uh, changed their uh, com completely changed their brand design they changed the logos and 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 colors etc and at the time a part of uh, of Airbnb audience were uh, was very angry about this. I remember that some found this uh, not good and uh, not possible. But in the end, I think Airbnb was right because the company found maybe a new audience uh, was uh, chasing a new perspective on the business. And maybe it's not the perspective the, 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 the core audience, the first audience loved in the beginning, but, you know, a company can change, so a brand can evolve with the company. So it's not so risky. You can change, so it's not that bad. But you have to take time to consider this piece of your work at least a little bit. Just, it's why, that's why, for, for example, with Logology, we are... Uh, we are uh, giving uh, the questionnaire in the beginning so you can take the questionnaire, learn about the value, l your own values and get proposals for color and logos. And if you begin with this, you're already on, 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 the, on tracks. Thank you. That's fantastic. This conversation could go on for a long, long, long time. But can both of you just share what is Logology for you? What is the meaning of it? As well as if people want to use your services, what does Logology offer? Where can they find out more? And I'll make sure to write the website in the episode description. So Dagobert, you can begin. Just explain to you what does it mean, the meaning or the brand of Logology, and then Lucy as well, so that we discover together different perspectives. Uh, it's, a, it's a good idea to do it this way, so have different perspectives. So for me, it's really like, it's a way to empower you if you're starting a new project, because right? I, I, I identify a lot with like, because I am myself, like a founder, building a startup, uh, you know, and before this one, I had tons of ideas, tons of things I wanted to build. And you know, I mean, we always know that branding matters, that we should do it, but it seemed like complex and accessible. It definitely did for me before I met Lucy. And then she started doing all my brands because, you know, she's my wife. So we were supporting each other. I was building her website. She was building my brands. But... Uh, so for me, that's what it is. It's about giving access to the vision of a brand designer, like whenever you need it, even if you can't afford like a full on designer yet. And it's just like empowering you. It's like, oh, okay, um, I have this new project. Uh, let me check Logology and see what brands I can build around it. And it's like, to me, that's the feeling I want. I mean, I see a lot of what customers have and that's the feeling I want to people to have when they use Logology is they feel empowered like it's not just like an idea you have like it becomes real like once you build it and you have like the brand okay I have I have a thing now it's not just in my head it exists and it's something I can share with the world and it's very motivating and very empowering so that's really the goal of Logology is to empower you like that I would just add that Logology um, is a way for me to put all my expertise and all that I've learned as a as a brand designer through these uh, these these years um, in the service to help entrepreneurs. Well, I'm fond of ideas and I'm and I'm fond of this 
energy that leads us as entrepreneurs to create new things, to to go on new projects and to imagine the future or even the present. But, you know, it's a beautiful desire in each of us uh, to invent our life or to change the world. Even if it's just a, something small, it doesn't have to be big, but I really like the small ideas too. Um, and I thought that with Logology, I could take all my expertise in a tool, in something simple, automated, that everybody in the world with just uh, one click on the internet could, could, could get. So that's really about this. It's like it's uh, about giving the opportunity uh, to every entrepreneur with a, a low budget to have a new a brand, new image, and to feel at ease to communicate. Because I know uh, from experience with working with clients before um, that when you have a, a good brand design, even brand identity, you will have a boost of confidence. And a boost of confidence allows you to find your audience, find customers, and yeah, it's like going to a, um, a meeting with a new suit or a new dress if you're a, if you're a woman, you know, you, you feel better. Um, so that's what I can give to the world. So I, I, I'm doing it. Thank you. I'm happy too that you're creating meaning for yourself as well, which is very important even for entrepreneurs. An important part of creating the brand is not only to create meaning for the audience, but for them to wake up feeling what they do is valuable, is contributing to the world, is expressing their talent and their abilities to a larger thing. Do you agree with this? That in some ways, a brand, yes, is about others, but it's a tool for you to feel you're expressing your purpose on this earth and in this life. What do you think, Lucy and Dagobert as well? I totally agree with you, Aziz, on this. It's completely, yes, it's exactly this. It's not only about others, but it's also about how you will contribute to the world and what is the story you are going to tell other and share with others yeah i think it's really a beautiful thing sometimes we think of branding i can imagine some founders uh, thinking about branding like uh, like they are they think about marketing or advertising as something that they don't want to have in their life but no it can be something beautiful it's just a a great tool, a great narrative tool to bring to bring us together and to change the world, whatever we want to uh, contribute. And that's interesting, the relationship of like the creator of the company and their own brand. Because I feel like my experience, at least building this startup, is like if you want to go anywhere, you know, with your project, you have to really believe in it. You have to care about it because it's going to be so tough if you don't care about it anyway. Like, you're going to give up when it gets hard. So this branding part, it's what I think interesting is, like, it's for the customers because, you know, but, like, it's also for you. It's kind of like a bit of personal branding. Like, you have to be, to love your own brand and it has to represent also you as the leader and the founder of the company because you know because you have also to feel like it's i mean it's useful for you as well and it's useful for others to see a relationship between you and your brand because like again this consistency again the brand is who you are and what people remember you with so when you look at like the brand of you know elon musk and you look at like the brand of Tesla or the brand of SpaceX, it's both brands who are like, who look, you know, pretty visionary and a bit aggressive and a bit like, you know, over the top. And that's who he is as a founder too. And there's something, you know, that makes sense of having consistency between who you are as a founder and like, you know, the brand of your company. When at the same time, 
remembering that the brand is mostly for your customers, so you need to, you know, design it and, and like, you know, focus on the right aspects. But like, there's definitely parts of, you know, of both. Thank you so much, Lucie and Dagobert. And of course, I thank Processio, which is what makes this podcast possible. Processio is the modern low-code, no-code platform for advanced automation and creating an enterprise-grade backend for your software. And I'm sure many founders will find that very useful. So anybody who is listening right now and watching can get a totally free, fully functional account at Processio.app. And for those with higher business needs, there is an exclusive, very generous 50% discount code, which is better, 50 off, one word, in capital letters, more information in the episode description. Thank you, Dagobert. Thank you, Lucy. This was my privilege, my honor, such a wonderful, insightful conversation. And I wish you to keep going. You're doing great things in this world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Aziz.